Welcome. This is Welcome to the NICU, and I'm Marge Day, a social worker who does the family programs in the NICU with Molly Wiley. Hi, I'm Molly Frost Wiley. I'm a NICU mom, and now I work here with Marge doing the NICU family programming. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we're going to try to be quick, and we just want to walk you through, through some things to help you understand the NICU and understand the comings and goings. Um, let us just say out front that if you have questions after this, we are always available. We're going to end with our email address in the last slide, and we really want to convey an open door policy. Please feel free to reach out to us. No question is too big or too small. The NICU family program, welcome. Welcome to the Klarman family NICU. Your family is part of the care team. Here we value families and all the love and knowledge they bring. Support the uniqueness of all families and cultures. I can't highlight that enough. Um, going forward as we talk about all this, what I think we need to have as an established foundation is that your knowledge and what you bring to the NICU is so important. You know your baby in a way that we don't and we wanna hear from you. We want you to feel open and part of this care team. Um, and that's so important to say from the beginning because you have no experience being on the NICU before. You don't know what to make of all this. So let me just say from the beginning that we wanna hear from you and that what you have to say is important and welcome. So please ask staff questions, be involved and know that we are welcome to those things. And know that you're a parent on the NICU and not a visitor. Yes. This is us. I'm Marge, this is Molly. Um, hopefully we'll get to meet you in person, but we thought we'd give you a picture of us so that you know who we are. Let's start out by talking about the facilities. Um, at this point, when you've come up to the NICU, you've probably already seen that there are two sides. You're probably beginning on the left side, so you'll sign in, you'll go through any initial paperwork at the unit coordinator's desk, and you'll go through. Um, on the right is a, a step-down unit, which is special care nursery. Your baby may at some point end up there. And we also have a NICU 5 on the fifth floor. Um, at the beginning of each of these NICUs, there's hand washing stations and infection control measures. We want to make sure that you know, especially now, how important that is that you wash your hands before you enter the NICU. There are wipes. You can wipe down your phone. Um, there are bathrooms. On the nine side, there are two. There is one before the doors open to the NICU that is open to you, um, and there's also one after that door. There's a bathroom on five the nurses can tell you about, and there's also bathrooms over on special care the nurses can show you. Um, if you are a mom who just delivered and you've just recently gone home or you're thinking about going home, let me let you know that it's important to bring in your care materials with you. So your body has gone through a lot of changes. And when you're still staying in the hospital, you had pads and you had cold packs and you had squeezy bottles and all those things right downstairs. Um, because of the precautions of COVID, we're not able to have those things in the bathroom. So please make sure you remember to bring those back with you when you come to the NICU so that you can make yourself as comfortable as possible while you're here. Um, on the NICU side, there's a parent walkway and there you will find um, water and ice for parents. There's a nice big um, water machine. Um, you'll also find there's a, two sinks where you can wash pump materials. And there's also a big basket full of milk collection containers. And next to that is uh, another basket full of plastic bags to put them in. So you can bring lots of those home. And your nursing and lactation will tell you about that. There's some cabinets that open up that are Sam's library. And there's some books there if you're looking for books to read to your baby. Um, you'll also note that on all three NICUs, there's a big basket area with grab and go snack bags. Um, we're not able to put out snacks in like an open way, but we can have these brown paper bags that have salty and sweet treats as well as ginger ale, just so that there are snacks for you to eat. And you are welcome to take those as quickly as you want. Um, and please do, because this is a stressful time and it's important to take care of you and make sure you're getting your calories. Do you wanna go ahead, Molly? Sure. So um, here's some information about coming and going and getting to the NICU. Um, so when you come to the NICU, I just want to reiterate, you're not a visitor. We are always open to parents. So please know that that's really important. You can call at any time and you can come. Um, we know that the policies right now are a little different. So right now, visitors are considered siblings, any uh, extended family, and that's for, extent, for infection control. So um, our two different caregivers can come and they can be at the bedside. And then for now, extended family and siblings are not able to join us on the NICU. 
Um, we have a document that we're going to send after the, after you guys um, watch this that has some local information on lodging if you're from far away. Um, there is a little bit more of a limited uh, hotel um, pool to choose from, but we do have some. Um, you'll check in at the front desk on the NICU and you'll get a parent ID badge. Um, and so that is an important piece because that identifies you as a NICU caregiver who can come and go from the NICU. You'll just need to bring your own driver's license or some sort of photo identification so that they're able to take your picture and also match it with your information. Um, when you call to the NICU, we're always happy to hear from you. You can call at any time. There's a verification process that we use that's very specific in order to make sure that we know that we're talking to the right parent for the right baby. So speak with your care team or your bedside nurse about what that phone verification information is so that when you call, you know the protocol for calling each time. One thing just to add about the ID badge, do keep your bracelet on that you got while you're in the hospital until they have made you um, a badge. And sometimes on a busy day, they might not be able to make it on the first day that, since mom's been discharged. But um, do keep that bracelet on until you have a badge because the badge will then be what you need to get in. But until then, you'll still need the bracelet. Um, more about comings and goings. Um, as Molly said, it's so important that you know that you are welcome to call at any time. If you wake up at two o'clock in the morning and you wonder how your baby's doing, it's completely okay to call the NICU. This is outside of all of the regular things you thought of in your life. Like you wouldn't call someone or doctors at two o'clock in the morning. This is different. Your nurses are welcome to hear from you and they are happy to hear from you if you have a question and want to see how the baby's doing. So please know you're not that person. You're always welcome to call and check in. The thing to know is that there's something called shift change and that happens at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. each day. And that is when the nurse who's currently taking care of your baby and other babies fills the next nurse in on everything that's happened and what the care plan is. And they usually sit down for 15 or 20 minutes and review all of these things. So should you call at that time or arrive on the NICU at that time, you may find a bit of a delay before your nurse gets to you. So just keep that in mind. Um, you're always welcome to call, but that is sort of our busiest time when they're changing shifts. So you may find a bit of a delay then. So don't um, be alarmed. The, the reason we mentioned that is so don't be alarmed if there's a delay. It doesn't mean that anything is wrong. It just means that right now, all of our staff is exchanging information so that they can tr transition care to the next set of staff. So if you're put on hold, we just want to make sure that everyone's clear on why that happens. It's not, it's not, it's not to be concerning. The other things to know about parking, um, and we will send you, if you email us after you've watched this, we'll send you a really nice link, a Padlet, which is all of the PDFs of all the information we're going to talk about, and we can fill you in on parking. We don't want anybody paying full price hourly parking in the hospital. There are different parking options. You can get a pass that you scan in that you can buy for a certain number of days. You can buy stickers that are $2 a sticker and cap your cost at $7 per day. All of these things are explained, but I want to make sure that you understand you don't have to pay the regular hourly rate. So please, when it comes to parking, email us and we'll send you the parking form. I think it's also located at the UC desk, right where you sign in. Um, but make sure you look into that because parking gets really expensive and these discounts are pretty significant and worth doing. Um, the other things to know is that like many of you will find that you're having a shared room. Um, and it's important for us to acknowledge that. And it's hard. This is a really important time in people's lives, very loaded with emotion. And there's often like a piece of material separating you from another person. So we ask that you respect that both for yourself and for them. Um, and that you try to take phone calls out into the hallway so someone who's being with their baby doesn't have to hear your phone call. We also ask that you respect um, phone and video. So don't take pictures of anything other than your baby. If you want to take a picture of a staff caring for your baby, just make sure you ask them first. I think it's important to always make sure people are okay being on video or having pictures taken. Um, the other thing to know is room and unit changes. There's been some construction going on in the NICU, as you know, um, and just generally, it's not uncommon for a baby to move rooms in their stay, sometimes more than once. So if you ever come in and you sign in and you see that there's a little folded over card with your name on it and it says you've moved rooms, don't panic. This is something that happens. I'd say within a stay, most people move two or three times. So having your room change is super normal and does not mean that there's anything to worry about. Um, and you also can know that the staff We'll move all your stuff with it. So while you're on the NICU, we want you to feel comfortable. So if you wanted to bring in 
a blanket that feels nice to sit with or you know some books from home that you're reading you can bring those in and have them on the NICU and if your room is changed all of that will also move for you so there's no need for panic. Molly do you want to add anything else? No that's everything. Okay why don't you talk about this? Yeah, so um, some of you may have already created an account, which is great, but if not, we have a wonderful portal for our NICU family. It's called My NICU. The login information to create an account, you just use an email. It's a shared account. So that means that for any two caregivers, you have one account for your baby or babies. So you use an email that you're comfortable sharing and create a password that you're comfortable sharing. And then you just need um, digits connected to your baby, which you'll find out from your baby's care team. Um, and that information will be available to only you to create the account and get tied in to your baby. So once you've created your MyNICU account, you have access to so much information. You'll get a daily update called Crib News that comes every day around seven o'clock in the morning to the, to the online site. Um, and what's wonderful about that is it's really hard when you have a baby on the NICU and people are asking all sorts of questions. You may have to juggle information and you know, you may get sort of exhausted trying to keep friends and family members updated. That document that comes every day with all the information about your baby's care time, that, that information you can download it as a PDF and you can send it to other friends and family. So that way you don't have to be sort of having to constantly be on and giving updates that you may not feel comfortable or just maybe too tired to make. Um, you can share that and also a lot of our NICU families love to scrapbook. It's wonderful to see your baby's journey over time. So on a hard day, you can look back and say, oh, look how far we've come. You can, you know, take a look at how they've grown. It's a really nice way to sort of capture your baby's stay. Um, other resources that we have on there are ways to connect with staff. So you can request uh, a family meeting. You can request a lactation consultant. You can request a meeting with social work. You can request spiritual care. All of these can made, be made directly through the My NICU app. So if you're home and you know that you want to, instead of picking up the phone, if you feel more comfortable using the application to call, to, to, to request that meeting, it's a really seamless way to get some of the needs that you might have um, while you think about it with just a click rather than sort of having um, to go in or to make a phone call or even while you're, you know, while you're thinking about it or if your nurse is in the room to ask for it. Um, so that is another wonderful resource. Um, there's a ton of information about all the different aspects of your baby's growth and development. There's information about family resources that we have at the hospital and in the community. Um, so I really encourage you guys to log in and create an account. It's an excellent, excellent resource. There's videos, there's a tour of the NICU, there's CPR. It's a wonderful resource for all of our families. One of my favorite things, and we'll also send you a separate link to this, but there's um, a dictionary of terms you might hear. Early on in the NICU, it can be really overwhelming. You hear a lot of words and you try to remember what they are, but it's a really easy to access dictionary of commonly used terms on the NICU sort of to be in a parent's voice so you understand what you're hearing and quickly you'll catch up with those, but it's a nice thing to lean on early on. So we encourage you to sign up, it's a great resource. Coordinating and planning. Um, if you haven't yet, we strongly encourage you to add your baby to your insurance. Um, it's super important to do that um, as soon as possible. So if you need to call your works HR, if you need to ask for help from the hospital, someone can come and sit with you and help you do that. Um, but it's really important that you let your insurance know that your baby's been born and get your baby on the insurance plan. Um, you should have been contacted by birth registry. Um, if you delivered at the Beth Israel, someone would have come to your room while you were still inpatient and helped you with that. If you delivered somewhere else and they didn't, make sure you reach out to them because you want to start the process in getting your baby's birth certificate. Um, one thing a lot of people want to do is transfer back to their community hospital. Um, if you came from somewhere else or if you do live far away, and you're gonna be on the NICU for a while, it can be really nice to have a decreased commute. Um, some people are coming for an hour, hour and a half. We just wanna let you know if that's something that you're interested in, we're okay with it. It's not like switching to the hair cutter in the chair next door and sort of like leaving someone behind. We understand how stressful this drive can be and how important proximity can be for you if you wanted to switch to home. So if that's something you're interested in, please let your team know. Um, there are limitations around when beds are available and also around when your baby is ready for a transfer, but it's something we want to help you with if that's what works for your family. So please just let us know. Molly, did you want to add anything? 
Just if you also have any questions about the different community hospitals, you can talk to your bedside care team and they can work with you to get the most up-to-date information about the different hospitals, because especially right now with COVID-19, there's different policies and the hospitals do differ. So if you wanted more information about what the policies and procedures were at your community hospital, the most uh, accurate and up-to-date information will be going through your bedside team and then they can access that information for you. Okay, so the roles of families on the NICU. Um, as we've said, and we hope you've heard from us, um, we really value your participation in care. We see you as part of the treatment team. Um, and as such, you are welcome to join medical rounds. Um, for some families that can be really anxiety producing and high stress, and it's not something that's gonna fit with them. For other families, they really wanna be there. They wanna be meeting with their team and hearing what their team is doing and learn about their baby and this new language that's the NICU language. And, sort of get an idea of what the team's talking about. That's up to you, but if you want to join medical rounds, you are welcome. And the way to do that is to speak with your nurse and find out when they're going to happen. Um, generally, our families participate in rounds when they're in the NICU. So if you are there, it's something that you could, the nurse or the team will come to you or you'll go to the table depending on the day. Um, but we want you to know you're welcome to do that. You should check with your nurse if that's something that you would like. Um, and you don't have to do it every day. Like you could decide to do it two days a week. You could decide to do it once a week. You could do it every day. It's completely up to you and sort of made to fit you. So you let us know what would be helpful and we will do our best to make that work. Um, Molly, I'm gonna let you talk about care times because I think you have a really sweet piece about that. Sure, so care times happen a couple times a day. They're usually regularly scheduled in three or four, every three or four hour increments. And they're a chance for our families to be much more physically involved in the ongoing care of their infants. So something like diaper changing, taking temperature, um, changing clothes if your baby's big enough, um, you know, and in some cases, it's even doing simple things like brushing your baby's hair. I know that one of the biggest things that I remember from when my son was on the NICU was getting a teeny tiny little toothbrush and brushing my son's beautiful red hair with this little toothbrush um, during care time. So it's a chance for you to really be more hands on because um, I think it's really important for our parents to have that confidence. And especially when your baby is so small and you, you know, you're concerned about how fragile they are, it's really important for you to work with your nursing team to, to learn how to care for, care for your baby. And for, especially for our first time families, you won't necessarily be used to doing this. So it's a real chance, you know, teeny, changing a teeny tiny diaper is a really important piece of being a NICU parent. And so being available and being at care time, you know, checking with your your team to see, you know, what time care times are happening and letting them know that you'd like to participate, calling in and saying, I'm going to be there for say the 9 a.m. care time is another chance for you to be more active with your baby on, on the NICU. Um, there's also family updates. So you will, you know, this used to be called family meeting and I think it was confusing because people sort of thought like they would sit around in a bed in a a boardroom. So family updates are something that are available to you. Early in your stay within the first few days, your team will give you an update. They will sort of let you know the original uh, shot of how things look, what they expect, where they see things going the next few days. Um, but things can change a lot. So if a few days have passed and you're interested in sort of hearing how things have changed, what the new plan is, you can ask for a family update. You can do that through my NICU, as Molly said before, which is the thing you sign up for. You could also just ask your nurse. So if you're feeling like, oh, I'd really like to hear from the team. I wasn't able to make rounds this week for a variety of reasons. Can we set up a family update? That's something that folks can do and they can give you more information because things do change. What you hear one day, five days later, you could be on a different trajectory. Um, your baby could be making strides and you want to know what this means. So always know that you can ask for a family update and your team can work with you and tell you how things are going and what to expect next as best they can. Um, that being said, we would be doing you a disservice by not saying the NICU is a really unpredictable place. And so no one is gonna be able to give you a cookie cutter of what to expect. Our babies don't feed and grow and get bigger and sort of a like this day, this day, this day. Every baby has their own journey. So be good to yourself and be patient. Um, we will do our best to sort of give you a larger picture of what to expect, but babies don't know calendars and they don't do things on specific dates. So it's going to take some patience for you, um, but your team can be there to walk that with you and to be patient with you and to help you have the best information possible. And just to piggyback on what Marge said, um, as far as requesting a family update, she did say that you could do it on my NICU. It's called family meeting in my NICU because we did just recently change the name, but it's one in the same. So I just want to note that. So that's not confusing that you think that something's separate. The family update 
is now a little bit, it, we've changed it a little bit in the format and also the availability of it to make it more family friendly. So please do use, you know, my NICU to request your, your family update or to, to use your nursing care. Okay, so NICU family programs. Um, a few things to know about. We've got a great program called Little Learners, which is available to you. Um, usually when babies are 34, 35 weeks old, they become eligible. Um, and that is a program where you are given a book and you're given some resources. Um, it is never too early to start your baby on their learning and reading journey. Um, and this is just, it's a wonderful program to help you get on the way with that. Um, there, you'll, again, you'll get a book, you can read your baby. You'll also get some resources about ways to talk to your baby, things to sing to your baby, just ways that you as a parent of a very little baby can begin this journey. Um, and it's a great program, it's totally free. Um, we encourage you to sign up. You should see information about it bedside once your baby ages in, but if you don't ask your nurse, um, we can certainly sign you up. Um, we also- It's still available on my NICU. You can find yes. information about little learners as well on my NICU. Yeah. Um, we also have classes. Um, there's a CPR class, there's getting ready to go home, there's developmental care. Um, as your baby gets older, your team will start to talk to you about these things. So um, just know that you can always ask ahead. You can read about them on my NICU, but these are things that we'll be offering you. Um, we also have a great hospital-based meditation program that's still going on during COVID. I'm gonna let Molly talk about that. Yeah, so we have an incredible Buddhist um, monk on our staff actually, and he, has such a calming presence. And so for our families who might need to um, create some space for themselves, or maybe you already have an active meditation practice, maybe you're interested in learning more about meditation and mindfulness, his name is Searing Yodsampa. Um, and he is working remotely, but he will, you know, over Zoom, over FaceTime, over phone, whatever works for you guys, he will connect with you to do some deep breathing, to talk about meditation, to talk about mindfulness. And it's a really wonderful way to create some space for yourself and to care for yourself while your baby's in the hospital. It's certainly something that I wish that I had done. My husband uh, started at his practice of meditation and now almost eight years later still does it very regularly. I think what I like to remind families is the NICU is a really stressful environment and it's hard to create moments of calm for ourselves. But those are skills that you need to draw on as a parent always. It's, it's not necessarily less calm when you get home. Um, you know, as a parent, there are moments of stress throughout your entire parent journey. And so uh, having an active meditation practice or learning about mindfulness is a really great way for us to take care of ourselves. But in terms of um, staying in touch with graduate families, we have a really robust graduate community that loves to take care of each other. And so if you're interested in staying in touch, uh, Marge and I are available. There's an email that we'll share with you at the end of this presentation, but also uh, as you approach discharge, you'll learn more and more about ways to get involved. We have a very active alumni community who donate, who in non-COVID times get together. We host large reunions and events, and we really like to make sure that people know that one of the beautiful silver, silver linings of the NICU is this wonderful NICU graduate community who, uh, you know, share an experience, and I think that's really important. I would just like to add that if you're early in your NICU journey, you may feel like it's such a novel thing and not many people have been in NICU, but your mind will be blown um, as to how many people have been affected by a NICU experience. People just come out of the woodwork um, and you learn that people you've worked with for years had a NICU baby and you just didn't know it. Um, so you'll be amazed at not just within the BI, the support of NICU families towards one another, but generally um, NICU families have an incredible history of helping one another and sort of really reaching out and giving support. So it's, it's a really, it's a true silver lining to this experience. Taking care of yourself too. Um, as Molly mentioned, through my NICU, you can request assistance from social work. You can request assistance from interfaith spiritual supports. Your team is there for you. Um, so please, if that's a resource that you think you'd like to tap into, please do. Um, and if you have any issues making those connections, please let us know and we can also help you. Um, one plug I like to put in, um, I'm hoping that many of you are watching this before you've actually gone home, maybe while you're still in the hospital. Um, and that first step home, I think the first big NICU milestone is that first time that you are discharged from the hospital as parents and you go home to spend the night in your own bed. Um, it can be really nice to sleep in your own bed, but it's really hard to leave a hospital that your baby is still in. Um, so I just, 
I want to acknowledge how hard that is. And I also want to say that try to remind yourself that your baby can't tell time and that your baby doesn't know that this is happening. It's so much of what we do is we project our feelings onto our baby. Um, so if you go to the bathroom for five minutes, your baby doesn't know the difference between five minutes and five hours. And just keep trying to remind yourself of that. This is a marathon, not a sprint, and you need your sleep and you need to eat and you need this rest. Um, and babies aren't telling time. So if one day you're caught in traffic and you're gonna be 10 minutes later than you usually arrive on the NICU, you'll be feeling, oh my God, they're gonna think we're not coming. The baby's gonna worry. The baby doesn't know, that's you. So just keep trying to remind yourself of that. This is hard. Um, and we have to try to be gentle on ourselves and try to give ourselves that space. But you are gonna handle this journey better if you're remembering to take care of you and you're remembering to eat and sleep. Um, that being said, Molly and I have found in talking to lots of families over time, that the more you can establish a daily routine, and make sure you get some sleep, the earlier, the easier your experience will be on the NICU. Um, it helps to just have a routine. You start to kind of fall into it. You know where you park, you know, you know, you bring in your coffee, you have your, your things you go through. That's sort of part of what helps contain you in this process. So the sooner you can kind of find your routine, you will settle in and things will get easier. Um, and again, sleep. Sleep is really important, especially for moms who are waking up to pump. You know, you're already breaking up your evening with pumping sessions. Make sure you're also remembering to take care of you. Um, Polly, do you want to share anything on that? No, just, and it, you know, it seems like there's a lot of added pressure on, on families to take care of themselves. And one of the ways that we have tried to alleviate that, I'm just going to mention this here because we'll send it out in the Padlet if you shoot us an email, is um, we know how hard it is for our NICU families to manage all the different things. There was so much that you had to take care of before your baby was on the hospital and now you have limited bandwidth, right? And especially now with COVID. So we've created a document called um, How Can You Help Us? And it really delineates some lovely ways to accept some help so that you can do things like rest, drink water, get sleep so that you don't have to walk your dog. You don't have to stay shovel. at home, stay, shovel the sidewalks. My husband never asked anybody to shovel the sidewalks. And so he would leave to go shovel because we were there in the winter. Those are the types of things people in your life want to help with. And it's so hard as a NICU family to ask for and accept help. So the document, look for the document. It's on my NICU. It's also in the Padlet. It really helps you. It's sort of a checklist of different ways and different categories that other people can help you. And it sort of softens the ask for you because it is really uncomfortable and awkward to ask for help and accept help. But nobody wants a freezer full of lasagnas that they're not going to eat when what they really need you to do is walk the dog or shovel the sidewalk or, you know, help you, you know, manage something or rides or whatever, the, whatever it is that you might need. Um, so I want to emphasize that, especially because I know personally how hard accepting those offers are. But I do know that in order to get the rest that you guys need as NICU families, you need to, you need to lighten your loads. So let us help you with that. On that note, there's also something called WellList, which is a free concierge service that's available to you. Um, it runs the spectrum. Um, it, if you, it's basically a concierge service. So you can call WellList and you can sort of say, hi, I'm a NICU parent at the BI. I'm looking to find someone who can shovel in my zip code for about this price. And they will do all the legwork and find that for you. That being said, they also will find free resources. So if you are a parent who has some food insecurity and you are wondering about getting more food resources for the winter, you can call them and say, hey, I'm looking for any food pantries in my area, or I'm looking to see if there's any resources where I can get discounted or free diapers. Um, so WellList is a concierge service that is there to help you. If you have those questions, whether it's pay or not pay services, they can be a great resource and do all that legwork. Because you're tired, you don't want to spend half your day Googling this stuff, let them do it for you. It's totally free. Um, one other thing on the taking care of yourself that I wanna make sure I mention is, I'm sure you've discovered that, you know, the NICU doesn't offer a lot of space right now for families to be because of the COVID restrictions. Um, so one concern with the current protocol is that like you come in and you're asked to spend the whole day in the hospital. Um, some people have telehealth appointments that they need to keep and they wanna have some privacy for that. So. That is something we do have spaces for. So if you have a telehealth appointment and you're feeling like you need a space to have it in and you're not sure where you could do that, please don't cancel your appointments. Um, talk to your nurse. We have some rooms that we can clean ahead of time and clean after that you can use 
for those appointments. You just have to ask and they will set that up for you. So please make sure you take advantage of that. We see a lot of people doing telehealth therapy. We don't want you not doing therapy while you're on the NICU because you're not sure where to have your appointment. Please talk to us and we will find that for you. Um, and just to wrap up, um, this is our email address. Please take a screenshot, use your phone. You can log back in to see this. Um, we would be grateful if after watching this, you could just shoot us an email um, and we'll send you back an email along with the Padlet, which has all those great links. There's some resources for NICU dads. There's the parking information. There's the how can we help sheet. Um, also, there's a survey. We would love to hear from you. We want to hear if this was actually helpful. Um, we would be happy to tweak this based on family feedback, and we really are very receptive to feedback. So if you could take five minutes to complete the survey on whether or not this is helpful, that would be great. Um, that being said, this is the best way to reach both of us. This email address goes to just Molly and I, um, and we are so available. If you have questions, no question is too small, no question is too big. If it's clinical and we can't answer it, we'll direct you to the right people. Uh, but we want to be there for you and be helpful. So please feel free to email us and know that we're pretty good about being in touch. Um, we're both in the hospital on different days, so we can either stop by or do this virtually. But please um, know that our door, our virtual door is always open and we would love to hear from you guys. Um, that's it, I think. Molly, do you have anything you want to add? No, I'm just uh, thankful that you guys were able to sit and listen to this. And if you have any questions, like Marge said, make sure... Uh, you take a minute and email because there's, you know, there's a lot going on. So we want to be helpful. Great. Thank you guys. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.